so hi guys welcome back again to life is just with ian Wally, where we talk about family parenting faith business and life issues in general today on this edition as you can already see here we have an amazing guest song we respect so much he's an authority in this field <laughs> yes if so yeah if you are talking about anything parenting anything family life mm -hmm. and you have not called pf you are wrong <laughs> <laughs> like you are just wrong so mm -hmm. join me in welcoming the amazing Praise for Wuwei. <laughs> welcome me. All right, welcome. Uh, welcome. I, I'm so excited to be here, and thank, thank you so much for for what you guys do. Um, if you're yet to subscribe to this YouTube channel, you better do that right now. Tell because me. this is where it go, is going down yes. every yes. now and then. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Um, it's a privilege to have you here on board. I'm oh, a servant. Okay. When you call, I, I respond. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate that, and we don't take it for granted. So I think I should hand over to yeah. my husband too. So yeah, so we're going to get straight to the point, sir. Ah, this topic is very, very important. It has to do with spanking of children, mm. and I will say personally that I am guilty, and I think I'm still guilty because. I think it's the way I've been, you know, I've been programmed. Mm. There are some things that my son will do, especially my son, yeah? <laughs> that he will do that before I say Jack Robinson, Marty Spank away. Why did you touch him? And it's just two years. And it's two years old. Mm. And I feel there's something inside of me that says that I, I, there should be a better way mm. of handling these things. Do you understand? So now the question is, what can we do to this child, especially the ones that are that are somehow well, people -willed. people will call them strong-willed okay. some yeah. people will call them stubborn mm. you know what can we do first of all then we can now talk about what are the things that we can do before actually spanking them <laughs> okay um i think the first thing you need to understand and i say to people that if anger is not in you you can manifest anger at any point in time mm. okay. you know you if lying it's not in you. You can't lie under any given circumstance. So you, sure. you didn't you didn't become a liar because you lied. You were a liar, and that's why you lied. You know. Um, so it's the same way. If spanking is not in you, because before you spank is a is a response to your hunger. Sure. So it's the way you have learned to say, Manage let me bully that. my way into what I want, because that's what we're actually doing. Yes. You need to understand that. So oftentimes when say, my child gets me, no, 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 your child is revealing the anger that resides in you. Because the anger of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. So what your child is revealing to you is that you lack the self-control to process things without trying to fight your way into things. That's so we wow. first need to situate that. You know, um, you know, because if spanking actually works, then every misbehavior should be rewarded with spanking in the family. Because we cannot say everybody is perfect. We are pretending that we are perfect, and so we have earned the right to command the disobedience in a child. Right? I mean, our own obedience is not complete, and our own disobedience, rather, is not rewarded with spanking. Because mm. if spanking is what corrects behavior, then let it go around. When it doesn't when do what we spank him. <laughs> we spank you. But we wow. don't do that, so we pretend as if it's the only child that, that, that deserves that. Now, back to your question. There is no stubborn child, especially if the child is less than seven. Wow, there it is no stubborn child. It doesn't exist. All right? There is no stubborn child. That doesn't exist. What you have is a misunderstood child or a troubled child. Okay. So, is that the child is troubled. Okay. And the child, that behavior is supposed to alert a responsible adult to say, I'm sending a signal that I need help. Yeah. Can you engage me to find out what I'm troubled by? Mm. Right? But because that behavior is not in the vocabulary of the adult, in quote, as trouble, is in his vocabulary as trouble, as disobedience, as rebellion, rebellion. as you, you, it doesn't go mad. Because never forget, that adult is a PhD older oh, from the school of his own parents yeah. who raised him. So he's been certified to behave in a particular way. So he's actually a proper ambassador of the school that, that brought him up. Mm. You know, so instead of engaging the child to find out uh, what is causing this trouble or 
how do I interpret this child? What we do is we spank and we feel cool and we pretend, convince ourselves that that behavior has been dealt with. Not knowing that what we have actually done it's is it's not discipline. Mm. What we have done is called domestication or punishment because there are three words. You have discipline, which is the Latin word disciplina. Okay. Discipline means to correct, to influence, to okay. train, to disciple, yeah, and to groom. Within the entire definition of discipline, you won't find fine spanking, yelling, shouting. It doesn't exist. But there's another word called domestication, which is the Latin word domesticatus. Domestication means to tame, to clip wings. That's what domestication means. Mm -hmm. Then you have the third word, punishment. Punishment is punery. So punishment is to, it means to inflict pain or avenge. Mm. So if you check our behavior, it overs between domestication and punishment. Punish. It's not discipline. It's not discipline. Well, so I want to ask, so how do you teach your child to do some certain things? So for instance, my daughter, anytime we come back from school, we know that the first thing is for us to pray. Mm. Yeah. Okay? And day one, Taralu Wanimi, you know that we are supposed to pray. Yeah, pray. Come, let's pray. But I don't want to pray. No, we have to. Then you teach her that this is exactly what we want to do. We do that. Day two, nothing. Day three is still the same thing. Same. She likes biting her fingers. I tell her, it is very wrong for you to do that. Don't do that again. All right? This morning, I see Kota doing it exactly that same How thing. How old is she? She's uh, four years. I mean, if she's biting her fingers, right, um, maybe that's the way she learns to concentrate. Something is going on there. There is a pleasure that biting her finger gives to her, which she will naturally outgrow. You won't see her bite her fingers at 10. Mm. So it's expected behavior. My son was sucking his thumb maybe till age 6. Wow. My son is 13. He doesn't do that anymore. Okay. Right, so we're not patient enough to watch them outgrow that behavior. Now, back to the fact that you want to you want the child to pray. So maybe the child is asking you a question: Why do we need to pray, and why must we pray when we come back, right? And so you are forcing that child. You are telling him that this God, you must be forced. Is a God who forces people to do what they don't even understand. That's what. So you are giving her a painful experience about God. So she's not going to see God as someone we must love. Right, you're seeing God as a Madio as Shongo <laughs> that we need to serve, you know. So because that child does not understand, I have my daughter. My wife calls me and says, Oh, you know, you better come and talk to your daughter. I said, What is happening? He said, eh, he, your daughter does not want to eat beans. We cook beans, she's not eating. I said, Okay. My daughter is not eating beans because it doesn't taste like rice. And because she doesn't understand why she needs to, to eat beans. So I call her mother, do you want to grow strong? She said, I want to grow strong. Do you want to grow such that you don't fall sick? She said, I don't want to fall sick. Are you aware that there's what is called balanced diet? She said, No, daddy, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. So I begin to take her through, you know, carbohydrates, protein. And I said, Protein, it grows your bones, it blah, 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 blah. And I said, Daddy, can you bring the beans? Let me eat it. Wow. So it's for the, pa uh, the parents to you, be patient enough to, to explain. explain and to allow time for what you have explained to be assimilated by the child. Because it's not the first day they taught you something that you must study. You know, so that patient, so every behavior of a child reveals our lack of fruit of spirit. Because one of the first is <laughs> love, joy, peace. Patience is patience. there. Long, Long suffering. suffering. Long suffering is there. Temperance. <laughs> so it shows that we don't have it. So that child is God's way of reminding you that you have not mastered this thing, you know. You have not mastered this thing, you know, but we bully our way. Mm. Because what the child is doing is not actually sinful. You say it's not, the question is, okay, every, we teach everybody should have a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So how do you say we should have a personal relationship with God? Then you determine, determine everybody must pray. But is it not... You can now say it's your family culture, family culture, exactly. which is not a problem. However, you need to explain to that child why do we need to do it at this time okay. to say okay it's a family culture this is our identity this is who we are you know and we always find a way to you know praise god so you say okay well, how would you like to pray to god okay so if you now divide the assignment you now say okay you know what you are the priest of the house so you are the one that will call everybody to prayer maybe you are the one that will lead the song or something like that right the child is now because you are it's raising a generation z yeah. generation z will sabotage anything you create that you didn't carry them along they're going to sabotage yeah. it that's the, their nature so if you don't understand i might the other my wife said oh you know i told the two they are two children you know we go and open the garage she said none of them moved i said because you didn't give a clear instruction i said there are two of them that you say 
One of you should go and open. Which one will go? I said, put yourself in the position. I won't go to. You should say, <laughs> Imale, go. David, go. go. One of them, you need. You are not giving clear instruction. So you cannot blame children for certain things. Okay. Right? I uh, say, oh, look at your son. He's not, he, he, he said he's not taking fruit to school. I said, why is he not taking fruit to school? Have you asked? Right? So I asked the boy, why are you not taking fruit to school? You know, he didn't understand why we're even taking fruits at all. But is there a way to balance? Because we've had, you know, some matured parents right yes. now. They are, they already have children of age, mm. but those children are like wayward. Mm. Let me put it that way. I'm talking about children of maybe junior secondary school, senior secondary mm. school. They don't even want to listen to their parents. Yeah. Their parents are so tired. Sometimes yes. they go to just start crying. Like, why yeah. is my child like this? Yes. Now, how can we deal with that? Are we going to say that when these children were young, they did not, in quote, discipline them or they did not <laughs> spank them. Because yeah. our, some of our parents believe that the reason why you are okay, it's good, because is yes. because when you were young, I used came to flog yeah. out yeah. the past you see, away from you. Our definition of you are okay is also faulty. Exactly. exactly. It's okay because I don't fornicate, I don't lie. Is that okay? Mm. I can be a zombie. I'm a zombie. I don't do any of those things, but I'm a zombie. Mm. I can't question my environment. I can't think. I'm, 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 I'm a, I can't create, be creative. So what is the opportunity cost of what they did? Because let me tell you this. There are two things I always say to people. If you have a child who is misbehaving or something, could it be the part of his life's journey? Does it need to, is there an audience that God is preparing for that yeah. child that he needs to go through that territory he's going through? Because mm-hmm. he's the high priest. He must feel, be felt, he must feel the infirmity of the people he's reaching out to. Uh, all this prayer, pray in the morning, pray at night. My father did it, including Litani. We prayed all this. I was there, yet I still went back. Mm. Is it for lack of parenting? Is it for lack of prayer? Is it for lack of Bible? Bible st- we had morning devotion, we read Psalm. We, we had night devotion, we read Psalm. We, it's compulsory in my house. Wow. It's compo- and my father was a priest, Anglican priest. Yet when I got invested, the first place I went to look for is where they are smoking. What this Bible says is train up a child in the way he should go. Do you know the way the child should go? Or you are assuming that the child must go your way? The child is not meant to go your way. The child is meant to go his way. So have you asked God, mm-hmm. who is this child and what way should he go? Because I asked my mom when I went back, how come you didn't spank me, you didn't shout, you didn't yell, you didn't beat me? My mother said, when you were born, I dedicated you to God. Mm-hmm. And so when you went back, I just I concluded you that up. you needed to go through this path because of the audience God was praying for you. That's why I was not moved. Said because a child of a multitude of prayer can never be lost. Mm. But not every parent can actually. So that your person. awareness is not total. Admit it as a parent that you don't know what is happening. No. Because the question is if God shows you now that your daughter needs to bite, uh, whatever, that that biting, right, is going to become an invention, right, that will keep people longer in our generation and will make everybody, eh? That Lord this, that biting. the secret to longevity <laughs> is to bite like this. That you can be biting every day like this. Eh? Guaranteed, you will live to 90. Even you, you will join your daughter to start biting. <laughs> Do you understand? So we don't understand these things and we must not pretend that we understand these things. Because if you are patient enough to observe your child without a bias in your mind, you begin to see things that you have never seen before. But that patience, to stand aside because what is your fear? Your fear is what we attract eventually. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everybody who say, I don't want my child to go back, their children eventually went back because what you fear the most is what you attract. Mm-hmm. Right? So I I know my role is to help my child become the best version of himself. So I don't impose anything on my children. I guide them. I try to understand. We have a discussion, right? And every time we discuss, we agree together on what they need to do and once we agree like that they carry it or they execute it because they were part of the decision mm. Mm. so it's not your shout that keeps a child sane no because if we say spank 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 mention one character in the bible that is spanked well some some people will still quote the same bible and tell Which you part? Spare the, spare it's, not the rod in, it's only one the uh, bible says out of the mouth of for it for it for something to be a truth mm. you must have two or three witnesses yes. you only have one that says bound in the heart of a child is foolishness. foolishness. Now there's a grammatical yeah, construction there. <laughs> Good. So follow this. It's a bound in the heart of the child is foolishness. The rod of correction. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, so let's analyze that. What is bound in the act of the child. It is a bound in the act of the child. So that's an indefinite article. It means it precludes that not every child has foolishness in them. So it number two, it wasn't God giving any instruction in that scripture. It was the sayings of the Jews, the proverbs of the Jews. Yes that Solomon was articulating in there. So it wasn't as if so God spoke to Solomon. It's a cultural thing. Yes, God did not say, Solomon no, bound in the heart of every child, because no, God will not say that. Right? Even when David was misbehaving, he said, man after my heart. God does not have that character to say, there's foolishness in a child he has created, because he was made in God's image, mm -hmm. in his likeness. If there's foolishness, then the enemy must not have done this. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Number two, he said the rod of correction. He didn't define that rod as koboku. <laughs> because if you now backtrack a bit into scripture, if David was speaking. It says, "Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort, comfort me." Him. What kind of rod comforts anybody? Mm. If it's koboku, does koboku, koboku does not comfort anybody. That rod cannot be. I am almost too sure that it cannot be koboku. Thy rod, the rod that comforts, must be communication. communication. Communication must be the word of God. Must be something else. But because we have been through slavery, our first expression of us is that we were under military government. Yeah. Number two, we were colonized. <laughs> so rod, everything that looks like rod is koboku to us. Because how you now know is if that is a template, then in training David, his father must be beating him. In training Solomon, he must be beating. In training um, everybody in the Bible, they must be beating him, but you won't find it. Hmm. You won't find it. It's quite. Uh... So we need to begin to accept. And let me tell you, my mother's words were more lethal than the cane of my father. My mm. father beat me, beat me, beat me to a level that I'll go and do it. I say, Koji Balo. My mother never beat me. But the day I stopped smoking, it was the discussion of my mother in my heart. She was not there. Like I was just hearing her voice. Her voice. Say, if your mom comes right now, what's she going to do? I say, she will die. She will just pass out. Because she doesn't expect me to be smoking. She said, you want her to die? I said, no, I love her too much. So drop the stick. That was it. So I have learned that communication can instruct and modeling can instruct much more than your anger because you need anger to use that cane. And my mentor taught me, he said, don't let your children attach pain to your palm. Mm. Let them attach love to your palm. So how do we really communicate? Because for me, I'm finding it a bit challenging. How do we communicate to a two, four, two, three, four, five year old child mm. and um, you expect that the child will understand what you are actually a two year old should not understand anything actually mm, because your, really? ro your role at age two between age zero to three is actually to be a scout your job as a parent is to observe because that's the most pure state of the child before corruption mm. your job is to observe what signal is this child sending why is this sending this signal? begin to document what you are saying from ages four to documentation. six, yes, wow. four to six, four to six, you are a model. You are modeling how you want your child to behave from ages four to six, right? So if you want to model competence, you model hard work, you model, you know, <laughs> prayer. If you you don't even need to say come and pray. As you are praying, you begin to see your child imitate you. Mm. At that age, they see you do what so you do. So if you means if you are praying and a two year old decide to say no, no. it is still okay. Just but as they see you do it, they will, if it's enjoy, if it looks enjoyable to them, they will begin to join. Mm. In fact, they will begin to mimic you. And imitate. Right from ages four to six, you are a model. So whatever you, when I was, when my child, my son was at that age, I had pot belly. One day, he told my wife, he said, when I grow, my tummy was big, I big at my daddy's tummy. <laughs> <laughs> so I went into wow. the gym immediately to remove it. Wow. Do you understand? From ages seven to nine, you are an instructor. That's where your mouth, your communication. But Seven even to, to now nine. teach, you now have to find the learning style of your child. Because if your child learns through play, then if you are not playful, playful, you need to become playful. Because that's how your child learns. Now, from ages 10, um, 10 to 12, you are a friend. That's when you are your child's best friend. Where they teach you their dance step. Where they teach you you are in their world. Then from you 13 like to 18, you are a coach. You are balancing perspective, right? You are helping them develop strategies to win. Because from age 19, you are just a technical advisor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, are you are done with parenting at yes. 18, you should be but, so, well, When it comes to modeling, like you said, yes. there are some things that could be permissible for parents, yeah. but you don't want your child to do something like, like that. What? Okay, for instance, for me personally, mm. I, I work 
through the night yeah and sometimes the tv is on i could be on tv till say 2 a.m yeah all right while i'm doing other things probably researching and or browsing or um, communicating with other people but i don't want my child to also be watching tv at that time that's modeling now how do i solve that matter because sometimes i'll tell her go inside go and sleep this is not the time for you to do this well, but i, I feel that but i feel that i am doing it myself yes. and how do i balance that so what you may need to do is to pause and so if you agree on okay children like because your child needs at least about 10 hours of sleep yeah right so you need to explain that you say at your age you need 10 hours of sleep you know so that mm-hmm. is going to read to you mm-hmm. right so your child takes your memory to bed so let's say at sleeping to bedtime is like eight o'clock yes. right you would have started prepping her from seven o'clock right to say okay um tales by bed tales or whatever you go to bed with her you know you pet her you read books to her till she sleeps off then you go and resume your your, your activities your activities mm. so i just think what he's trying to say is parents are just basically not patient enough yeah. they are not they are not because they were not taught parenting the word parenting is to bring forth that's what it is right so we need to admit that we were not skilled we were not taught and we are not skilled and that everything you see in your child that you say you don't you may not understand what your child is saying and that's why your first response is get curious don't take a position because your position might be wrong and once your position is wrong you will not punish a child for being a child because a child is doing what a child should do at that age so parents need to research yes and to be taught they need to, to they need to, i mean i used to believe in beating before i also agreed because i now began to understand that no this there must be a better way my parents beat me i didn't turn out okay good. so what I, what you are saying right now is no beating at all i don't beat at all i don't i no longer wow. beat okay so i guess this will now lead us to the major discussion because god does not beat me i guess this will now lead us to the major discussion what exactly should we do before we can now spank or be that child. Okay, seven, that? seven things. Now, I, I'm not saying don't beat, beat, but make sure that you go through the seven things before you beat. Seven One. step. So, you want to continue watching this video without subscribing? You'll be sneaking in and sneaking out. No comments, no like, no share, no subscribe. Mm-hmm. You no turn on notification bell. Ah, ah. As in, who does that? Who does that? Who do, it's, it's totally unfair. It's, it's unfair. It's unfair it's, to Yanu Wale. It's not even to your own benefits. Because if we drop a video that will bless your life, you can miss it. You will not know. You will not know. For you to get notification, click the subscribe button. So what we are going to do now, we are just going to wait. Mm. 10 seconds, maybe. <laughs> thank you for those who have subscribed what to celebrate let's clap for them thank you welcome on board welcome to team yano wale all right so let's continue enjoying that video right now never beat a child for what you have not taught him mm. okay because it will be wrong and unfair to beat me for what you have not taught me okay two never beat a child without giving him time to assimilate what you have taught him and you know a thousand years before god is like one day so i, I, I wanted to ask that how long should we give a child until he masters it to assimilate what if he's taking forever what do you mean forever? It cannot take him till 18 years to master it. Wow. Right? So you are the one in a hurry. So never beat a child without giving an opportunity to master what you have taught him. Free. Never beat a child when you are hungry because you will damage your child. Right? Four. Uh, never beat a child without agreeing proud to the time the offense is committed. That's the disciplinary true. measure for that offense. So you need to say when you lie is five strokes. So and that includes everyone, including so when you lie, you need to beat yourself with five strokes too. Oh, it has to go across. It, it must go across. Because if you can say beating can solve this problem, then you must solve it across board. <laughs> okay. Now, so number four. four. No, that I've done 
I've done you've done for it. Five, five now. Five. Now never beat a child when there is no proof that beating can solve that problem. Yeah, there must be proof guaranteed that once you beat a child like so if you beat if you give me my five five, eh, that behavior disappears. Exactly, yes. Magically or miraculously. <laughs> right? Okay. Six. Never beat a child when there is another disciplinary measure outside of beating. Because what can make what can pain a child may not be beaten. If you withdraw some cartoons, for example, it may be more painful yes. than beating. Yeah. And children behave more. If they, exactly. It depends on how high the stake is. Right? So you might command obedience faster by withdrawing some privileges than beating. I think it works for TKL too. We yeah. go for um, like monthly lunch outside. Uh-huh. And I remember the last time I told her that if you don't do this thing, you're not I'm going, going out. <laughs> you're not going for lunch. Do you, do you understand? So, I can't remember the seventh one now. But those six, right, if you answer those questions, then you can decide to beat. I, 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 I think in short, you are saying that <laughs> you shouldn't beat yeah, at all. Because, because I always say to people, you see, if you have a good relationship with God, how does he treat you? I'm not going to treat you less than the way God treats me. Right, so there are things that God expects you to have mastered till now. You have not mastered have it, not. and it's not beating you. So what right do? You, so you are like that person in the Bible who somebody was owing five thousand, and he was forgiven. He now saw somebody owing five hundred. Now put and the person in jail. I must guess money. Right. Wow. So you need to ask because what people are now saying it is this American stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. it's the American. They are they are children as sports. But check everything on your prayer point list. Everything you trust God to afford. They invented everything. What you must not compromise is the confidence and the esteem of your child. And your anger will compromise that. Hmm. Okay, so the question is for people, for parents that have been fond of, you know, spanking, shouting, yelling. And what can they do right now? I hope it's not too late, especially for children that are still maybe six, seven. They need to first go and apologize to their children. Let me tell you, there are two ways we process God in Africa. In fact, one. The second one is not taught. We process God through the prism of fear, not through the prism of love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know, so check prayers in church. Raise a prayer point. God, let the love of God swell up in my heart. Let me love God the more. The voice the is love. <laughs> but when you say, let the unkillable killer kill my enemy now. You say no. In fact, not just I. You see our behavior. We gyrate like Shongo and Ogun. If you have seen your Bible movies before. I see people do Yes. We understand fear, we don't understand love. And that's what we're passing. So our fathers, I'm a disciplinarian. What he's saying is that once it's coming like this, run. children run away. That's not love. That's not fatherhood. Bible talks about a disciple of Jesus love who reclines. That's love. Your child must see you, dad is here, and jump on you. We didn't have that relationship with our fathers. I didn't hug my dad. All through I was a child. I can't remember my father hugging me. Or carrying me or playing together, I can't. But I think they think if they give you that liberty of hugging yes. and all that, you'll be taken for. Them so for they would say they were disciplined and they discipline us. Yes. If they discipline us, why is Niger- why doesn't Nigeria look disciplined? Because mm-hmm. a disciplined people will produce a disciplined nation. Yes, in disciplined people will produce and in disciplined nation, a domesticated people will produce a domesticated nation. They domesticated us. They didn't discipline us. Wow. And that's why there's evil all around. That's why everybody's misbehaving. Right, because we're domesticated, that's why we see evil. We know this man is committing evil with a leader, but we can't challenge him because we're domesticated. Mm. So, that, that's why we can't challenge. That boldness is good. Americans will challenge Donald Trump. They will challenge baby. Then they will talk to him anyhow. They know he cannot. He cannot arrest them. Go and challenge uh, President of Nigeria. This is how these things <laughs> will be work. Missing. This is how these things work. So when we understand it, so the problem you want to the free nation. the mind of your children. I mean, I see my children play. I wish my childhood was like theirs. My daughter can say anything. She can challenge anything. She can tell me anything. My son can say that. I don't agree with what you have just said. And I'm not offended. Okay, so, okay, I think it's because of the way we were brought up. Because sometimes when my daughter is saying some things, in my mind, I'm trying to remember what place where has taught me <laughs> and at the back of my mind i'm hearing my parents voice and i'm saying you discharge your root <laughs> so how do we balance um child a child challenging the status quo yeah and um 
knowing I, I'm talk, I, I guess you're talking about your response to that child you know how do you balance I, I you don't. telling the child no, that this is yeah this is pure rudeness okay and i, I don't okay, i don't is. see um if a child is rude so my children have something they read and it goes i'm a symbol of trust and i'm trustworthy okay wow, whatever like goes out of me must pass the test of worship, worship unto my god, god. I influence my sphere with sphere values everywhere, everywhere I, go. I go, right? I am a responsible and I take responsibility for whether I am, I am love and even if what you respond when you encounter them. So when they do a behavior that I consider inappropriate, I ask them to read that thing. So when they get to, I am love and heaven is what you experience. So I said, did you just give me heaven? Mm. Right? Then they look at me and say, no, that this is not heaven. Oh, really? When they do assignment and the assignment was horribly done and it was improperly done i said can this pass the test of worship unto god <laughs> then they look at me and they say no it cannot so can you go and do the one that will pass the test of worship, of worship what am i teaching zero margin of error mm. exactly yeah. so Excellent. when when they do what is wrong the first question is who are you so my son says i'm a king he says so kings do they do this thing that you have done he says no so why did you do it he said that maybe i forgot something so, to kings, when the king begins to forget who he is, who has he become? He said, can begin to behave like a servant. Are you a servant? He says, no. It's a conversation. But you know what I'm doing? I am reminding him of who he, who he is. is. Every misbehavior can be traced to two things. A non-discovery of self or a non-remembrance of self. Yes, if you don't know who you are, you will mess up. If you forget who you are, you mess up. The environment, unfortunately, is designed to challenge your child's identity and to make him forget who he is. So your job is to keep reminding them of who they are. How do you know? When the prodigal son came back, the father did not ask him, where did you go? Mm -hmm. The first thing is, the boy said, make me a servant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That word irritated the father. And he quickly said, please change his clothes. What his father was doing, restore him to God. sonship. He's a son, no matter what he has done. Yeah. It was to remind him oh, that please. a son must never be a servant. Wow. So your job is to consistently remind, once you have a child who has mastered who he is, there's no society that can shake that child because so he has so all the fear that parents are yes. having in this generation now yes. because most especially young parents most of them are panicking the way the world is going right I now I'm not, how will i raise my child my son how goes, my my child son goes to a school live? that he sees people believe in gay exactly and respectfully it tells them i don't accept your way i don't believe in you in what you are doing but i love you nevertheless mm. and these, these school teachers are saying how said so because my father taught me to love he said, all I see is human being, made in God's image. Mm. He said, but I'm not going to accept this way. Wow. Yeah. So parents need to get to that point where they can... Um, parents first need to heal from the pain and the trauma their parents subjected them to. Some parents did not see it as a pain or trauma. They won't see it because they also were also subjected to it. Because our parents have become great. What have, you, what have you, they become? What have they really become? So, so you were saying something. You gave us the first point. That the first point is to apologize to the child. Go and apologize to your child. And now ask your child, if you want the best of me, what would you expect me to do? What do you think I should stop doing? What do you think I should start doing? You'll be shocked. Your child will give you feedback. Mm. Right? So I mean, we, we what, ask... What age range of child are we talking about now? Any child that you feel you have hurt, usually this goes for teenagers most of the time. Okay. Yeah, because at teenage years, you're already in this running battle. Mm -hmm. You know, but the younger ones, I mean, you engage okay. them, play with them, you know. Um, I observe my, I mean, my son has told me, I, I mean, I would have thought, okay, David has aptitude for music. But my son told me, he said that, you know, I want to do something else. Wow. Okay, is that what you want to do? Fine. So I'm going to support you. I'm not going to impose my will on you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He said he wants to be a robotic okay, so engineer. So, so that means sometimes, even from our observations, we yes. can still be wrong. You can be wrong because the most important thing is, is a leader is an influencer. Mm -hmm. That music he had aptitude for is a, um, what do you call it, is a means to an end. He can't be using all the rest for the rest of his life because there's more to him. Yes. Right? And never forget that there are dimensions to your child that begin to unfold. A child is like onion. With every pill, he releases another pill. So you can't. So you just say the child is artistic, but there may be branding in him. 
that that art is just an introduction mm -hmm. to say, okay, he loves to think out of the box in abstract. That's a brand consultant. Okay, so can, but we have situations where parents can deduce yes. from the child that mm. with what this child is doing, it might likely be become this. Yes. And what if as a parent you start guiding your child on that path, but somehow your child decided that I want to do something off this thing. You know, sometimes it happens. Yes. And you as a parent, you're looking at this child and like, I can't see this particular thing you want to do inside yeah. of you. This is what I am seeing. This is what, I mean, out of love. Yeah. This is what I feel that you will be, be able to at. do. For instance, a child that is very good in, say, biology, chemistry and all of that, and, and the person likes to ill person, I mean, treat people and all of those things. The person is loving. Normally, you think that, oh, maybe this Health person who is one who go into, um, you know, Health nursing, care. healthcare and whatever. And suddenly, the child just said, I want to go into engineering. And you know that this child doesn't really like physics mm -hmm. or any engineering course. But this child is just so passionate that this is engineering, I have yeah. to do it. And as a parent, you are thinking that if this child goes by the way of engineering, it might fail. Mm -hmm. How are you going to, you know, help that? You need to find out why does one go into engineering? Is there an influence around him? Is there someone here saying like, I studied accounting because I saw my uncle, he was MD of cooperative bank, and I saw that he was very rich because he was the one giving everybody money. So I just said, ah, this is the way to be rich. No, I don't like maths. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I struggled all through from that I knew I would not practice. Do you understand? Mm. So sometimes you need to check what are the influences around him? Where did you? So why do you want? What problem do you want to solve? By the time you begin to ask that question, you may be able to guide him back. But if he still insists, okay, let's start. I mean, by the time he realizes, I begin to struggle with physics. Then he knows that there is no engineering, and there may be another type of engineering in him mm -hmm. undiscovered. Like maybe I'm a family engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget, nothing is cast in stone, mm -hmm. right? Because who is an engineer? And engineering even has nothing to do with physics. It's just because we have limited engineering to construction, to mechanical, mechanical you know. See, and, an engineer is simply someone who can create a frame and a model and build something. Do you understand? Okay. A pastor is an engineer. Because he's engineering people into God's presence. <laughs> yes, to learn to do. Yeah, so there may be much more than we have discovered. Mm -hmm. Right? So by the time the child now gets into his fullness, you're like, oh, okay. This is a form of engineering, but the school has not recognized this engineering. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That's why we say that, you see, as a parent, you are like the aquarium. Your child is the shark. Mm. If you put a shark in an aquarium, it will never outgrow the aquarium. Wow. The shark will remain small. Small. Until you break the aquarium. If you now break the aquarium and throw the shark, child into the sea, it will grow into its fullness. Wow. So we always say to parents, break the aquarium and become the sea. At the level of the sea, your child is limitless. Wow. Thank wow. You. I think we've thank learned a lot thank today. Thank you so much. So overall is that there is no even room for spanking, based yeah. on what you said. <laughs> it's a choice, but I don't, I mean, I'm raising children and I have a 10-year-old and I have a 13-year-old and I don't see any reason to spank them. Wow. And they are well behaved. So, Mr. Prez, I know you have some family um, life courses and yes. all that. So, what would you recommend uh, for, especially for parents? parents. I'll recommend parents. The, there's a course called the new, new Rule of Parenting. Um, it's about five new rules of parenting. Um, you know, I'll recommend that strongly. It's about four-week course. Wow. You know, um, I'm in class with them. Online is virtual. You know, um, if you get on my website, you can always check that. You know, when we're doing the next one, but it's it's I I think it's one of the best courses we've created. You know, parents have a lot of testimonies about that course as well. You know, so I recommend that for every course, especially if you're a black parent, African parent, yes. you will need that because um, we are the ones that were traumatized, and that's why we traumatize our children. Mm -hmm. You know, so and our children will the pass first class again. totally is about healing. Gets parents to heal from the trauma they get into their past. They break it down and they see themselves, you know, so they heal them from week two, then we're not getting to the nitty gritty of, then in class they script, because the new rule of parenting is to script a child. You need to script your child intentionally. I mean, I went to study how Bill Gates was raised, study how Elon Musk, how these people were raised, and I found similarities mm -hmm. to say that you can actually script a child to become a billionaire. You can script a child to become anything, mm -hmm. right? But you now need to understand how to create the systems, how to create the environment. 
Right. You so, can actually okay. mess up a child. Sorry, let me cut you there. Um, some African parents, especially, might say the examples of the people you gave yeah. in their own sense of yeah. it are not godly. They want to raise godly children. But we are using the we are using the approach. They don't even understand godliness. It's sad. Mm -hmm. I have asked parents before. What is godliness? Who is a godly child? So it's humble. It's obedient. It's respectful. Okay. Can you, can, you, can you? I don't even know where we got that from. That song. Don't even tell it, but he doesn't argue with his parents. He didn't live with his parents. So where did we get that from? Samuel That's did not true. live with his parents. He lived with Eli. Eli. Mm -hmm. So how did why did he didn't argue with Eli? Uh, how? I don't know. But we had to create that song to to bully children. But that's by the way. Now, so when parents make statements like they want to raise a godly child, so who is a godly child? Simple definition: a godly child is a child who looks like God. Yeah. What are the attributes of God? Omnipotent, omniscient, creator, right? Mm -hmm. Now those attributes. So if you say this person is a creator, it doesn't fit into our description of godliness, because our own godliness is character. character. Competence is not. So we can be holy but incompetent. Meanwhile, mm. God cannot be incompetent. Yes. Incompetence is ungodliness. Mm. True. So we don't. So I now ask parents: Can your child be omnipresent? They say no. It's only God that can be omnipresent. It was placed in God's image. Can your child be sovereign? They say no. He cannot. Can your child be a creator? They say maybe. Right. So I ask them: Is there any child who has created any product that is all over all the world? Over. And they say Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is omnipresent. So that you don't even believe your child can be omnipresent is mm. proof that you are going to stifle the potential of your child. So the greatest problem of many children becoming the best version of themselves. Is in fact, if you check the way Jesus was raised, they could have stifled him because at 12 he was challenging people, yeah. challenging professors. He was not supposed to be there. The parents and, had even moved and on. He had to remind them. I'm, and just, I'm just thinking if it happens to be parents of today, they could have actually moved Jesus out of that place and say. You don't even they have respect. Beat him, man. You don't even have respect. You say, what yeah. are you even saying respect? Yeah. They've Jesus. gone on a journey of two, two days, days. And they he's, discovered I was not amongst spanking. his family. Uh -huh. He's spanking. They now travel back home. And they now came back. He now said I have to do the work of my father. Why As in, what, what nonsense are you talking about? Are you okay? They're going to they're look gonna, at the people you are challenging. Look they're at the people you are questioning. <laughs> and even Jesus communicated that he is here to save the world. They are going to beat that savior out of him. You want to die the way you can. They are going to raise a prayer point. You shall not you live. Die. You, die. Die. you must live. To declare you must, with long life will he will, will satisfy you. you. There is no way they're going to allow him to fulfill his purpose. Maybe they won't even allow him. So allow him how to, many to Jesus? Die on the cross. How many Jesus has God sent into our family as children that we are killing mm. or turning them from becoming who they are supposed to be? So these are critical questions people need to begin to answer. Yes. So when we say God, we don't understand godliness honestly. Because we only if we are, if we, if Nigeria has mm. maybe one thousand godly people, Nigeria would have changed. Because if godly people create a godly environment, we understand religion, not godliness. Wow. Yeah. I think we are done. So, <laughs> <laughs> so guys, um, the question is: How exactly have you been raising your child or your children? Yeah. Um, for me, I know I'm guilty. I still spanked my son. We yesterday. need to spank him <laughs> because you have come to class because, and you're spanking. Because you yes. know what? The guy just went to the room and poured entire cream and just poured it on the floor. Messed At up what everywhere. age? Two. <laughs> Good. So let me tell you what has happened there. If you had a two year old and you lack the awareness to know that things that the child can pour. Mm. Should be put at a particular height where his hand cannot reach, then you should be spanked. <laughs> so you are reporting yourself to because you are at fault. So when my child was within that age range, our matchbox was at a particular height because I you need to preempt. He sees us light the gas every time. If we're not yeah, doing it, we would attempt to do it. To do it. So we yeah. put the matchbox at a height his hand cannot reach. Every glass cup was at a height his, his hand cannot reach. So even if he tries to climb, he can't get there. So cream was at a height he cannot reach. So the tendency that he, he will pour cream, he will mix cream with it, it doesn't exist. So you have to so create the environment. Environment. Yeah, you have to try and prove so you are beating the child, pretending child. that the child understands that this is a cream or uh, this is what they use this for. I guess, <laughs> I guess why he was beating him or he was angry about it was because he had told him, "Don't touch this." You are don't telling a two-year-old. I don't understand. <laughs> 
And you know the funny thing, he still went there today. He will go there this morning. Because that child is trying to explore his environment. Mm. It's like someone who came newly into the world. And every stranger is in. He's trying to explore. What is this? What is, what is this? Here? That's why sometimes you see children, a snake comes. A child is playing with a snake. And the snake mm. never bites the child. Until that was gone and begin to shout. The child does not know. And the snake knows that the child is exploring. And the snake never bites the child. Wow. A child is exploring. And you are beating a child. So the curiosity and the inquisitive nature in him yeah, is what you are killing. Like wow. So when he gets into age 13 and he can't question anything, he can't question his environment, you know, say, ah, I need you to be as sharp as me. No, you t- took away that power when he was trying to question everything around and you were beating him. You should get excited with him and use that opportunity to instruct him. And say, wow, you're an explorer. We have an explorer in the house. Oh, wow, you are mixing things. Maybe that child is already giving you a signal that I'm going to be mixing things and I'm going to be creating a new product. Mm. out of it but you can't see it that's why you need to always pause and ask what is this child doing before you take any position and I think it might also mean that your life is a bit stressed up because if you are not living under stress you should be able to enjoy that fun it means childhood has been taken away from you hmm interesting (laughs) so how many of us are child would be taken away from that's a deep question all right so ladies and gentlemen i think um we have learned a lot from yes. today's episode and i want you to drop in the comment section what have you learned what are the things that you've been doing before and from now on what are the things that you're going to stop doing to your child sorry before we go okay um, the other time we were talking about um the new way of parenting yes. you didn't tell them exactly where they can find you it. can find it on my website www.iampraiseforway.com okay. all our up- upcoming programs are there so you can um, register and there are lots of courses in there as well that you can take okay thank you so much thank you so much, much. it's a yeah. privilege yeah yeah, yeah. bye bye <laughs> <laughs> okay you, well. so if you really enjoyed this video give, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends let other people also enjoy it let other people learn from it and let us change our environment let us be the new set of ancestors and help children be who god has uh, called them to be yeah. thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye <laughs>